Now, superintelligence, as philosopher Nick Bostrom says, it's an intellect that's much smarter than human brains in practically every field, including scientific creativity, general wisdom, and social skills. Social skills, creativity, wisdom, these are not things we associate with computers because we don't live in a world where they can do it yet. But we're going to. We have to think about what, what is that going to be like. Um, so this has outlined in my head a road to superintelligence that we are currently on. And where are we now? We're in a world run by artificial narrow intelligence. So it's all around us, okay? We have the, 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 the fine-tuned systems that tune your, the parameters of your anti-lock brake systems in your car, things like that, the fuel injection systems in your car. Okay, that's artificial intelligence. Uh, your phone has all kinds of apps, like Pandora or Siri or many others that use artificial intelligence. The internet, of course, is full of it. When you go on Amazon and it says, people who bought this also bought, that's an artificial intelligence working, and that's not a human who figured that out. Google search engine, obviously, is the ultimate AI and, and ANI in our lives. Um, things like flight ticket prices, other sectors, military, manufacturing, finance, AI is all over the place there. All right, so um, it's, again, hard to see it because we don't call it AI, but we're currently in a world run by it. But is it scary yet? Not quite. Uh, it's limited to kind of isolated catastrophes. Uh, the 2010 flash crash uh, was a was a stock market crash caused by an AI doing what it thought it was supposed to do, and we hadn't thought of a certain circumstance yet, or it can maybe knock out a power grid, or maybe even melt down a nuclear plant. Bad things, but it's not gonna wipe out the world. Uh, it's, it, it, and you can almost think of the current ANI that's out there as, as it's like the amino acids in the primordial ooze before any life had begun on Earth. You know, it's the stuff of life, but it's not life itself, but then something happens, and it, one day it, it woke up. And so the question is, is that what's going to happen here? And so a lot of people think that every one of these ANI technologies is just a brick quietly being laid on this road to superintelligence. Um, so the, 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 the arrow here, this is how, we, how do we get from where we are now to a world with general intelligence, with artificial intelligence that's actually as smart as we are? Well, it's hard because it's what we think is hard, calculus, engineering, things like that, those aren't actually hard to program because we just invented those in the last thousand years. We are total amateurs at those things, and if, if there's something that we have just kind of figured out, well, it's not that hard to program something else to do it. But what seems easy to us, walking, talking, uh, seeing, in 3D. These things were actually programmed by 3.8 billion years of evolution. And it's an unbelievably fancy fine-tuned software in your brain that can do these things. And it's really hard to actually make that. Um, and so just some examples. You know, you can tell the, uh, an AI, I want you to beat the world master in chess. And then this has happened. And AI says, oh, okay, I got it. That's no problem. You say, okay, also read this word. And the AI's like, oh, no. You made it slanty, and it's, it's red. I don't, I don't know. I mean, why do the captchas work on something that can beat the world master in chess? But it's because the essence of an S or a B, that's actually pretty hard. If I do 10 different Bs, and you're trying to, you imagine you're trying to program something to understand, well, those are all Bs. How are you going to do that? In some weird handwriting? I mean, it's, it's actually quite difficult when you think about how to program it. While actually programming chess, that's kind of exact. There's a certain number of possibilities. You could actually do that more easily. You can tell an AI, I want you to memorize every street in the world and integrate it with real-time satellite data so you can instantly give me directions from any point to the, any other point, taking into account traffic, accidents, construction. The AI says, yeah, got it. I'll just get, get me some coffee. I'll do it. It's no problem. You say, okay, also, is this a dog or a cat? And the AI is like, Jesus! Now, granted, this is maybe kind of hard for humans, too, but... <laughs> so, this kind of thing that we think is so uneasy because we are animals. We understand what animals look like. Our brains are programmed for facial recognition. That is actually really hard. 
um, Donald Knuth, a major AI thinker, he says, AI has by now succeeded in doing everything that requires thinking, but actually failed to do what most things that we can do without thinking. Um, other examples involving seeing, if you see this, what do you see? You see, okay, uh, gray, some gray, and light gray, and dark gray, and some black, and no problem. The AI sees the same thing, easy. But if you lift up that black, Okay, now you say, okay, I got it. Okay, so actually it wasn't what I thought it was. There's some 3D stuff, there's some slats and some, some angles and some cylinders. The AI just sees a bunch of two-dimensional gray shapes, same thing he saw before. Your brain's doing a lot of fancy work to render actually what that's supposed to represent in the real world. Likewise, showing, you know, you see very clearly a three-dimensional black rock sitting there with some light on it, no problem. The AI sees a two-dimensional collage of gray, white, and black. It's very hard to actually figure out what that is in the real world, this stuff we take for granted. So how do we get there? Well, there's two things that need to happen for AI to get to kind of where the brain is. First of all, the hardware has to get up to the caliber. So this is like when we talk about Moore's Law. Um, you know, the human brain, uh, it, 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 it works, depending on who you ask, at about 10 quadrillion calculations per second. That's a lot. And computers right now cannot do anything close to that. But if you look at a graph, a prediction graph, of what you'd be able to buy for $1,000, the computer can buy for $1,000, what it will be able to do. Well, this is from the year 2000, and actually it's been holding pretty steadily. And if this continues to hold, that it will actually finally reach the brain's calculation power by about 2025. But then by 2050, it's reached, the, for $1,000, you can buy something that has the power of all human brains in the world combined. So this kind of thing with exponential progress moves very quickly. Software is another thing that has to change. You have to also make it, you can't just have the fancy computer, you have to make it smart. How do you do that? How do you get it to think? Well, there's some ways. We can plagiarize the brain. Um, basically say, well, we have a prototype right here. We have a computer that clearly, that already is doing what we want it to do. Let's copy it. Uh, so you can build neural networks like our brain and try to actually get AI to learn that way by strengthening certain pathways when they succeed and weakening ones when they fail. You can go the whole distance and try to do a whole brain emulation and actually slice a real like human brain into the thinnest possible slices, two-dimensional slices, and then render the whole thing into a three-dimensional model inside a computer and you actually have a brain in a computer. If that was a real person, that person would now feel like they were in a computer, they would seem like the person. I mean, that is a lot of technology, but it's something we could potentially get to. People are working on it. Um, you can plagiarize evolution. You can say, okay, well, forget the computer. Who built the computer? Evolution, okay, let's copy what they did, and let's do that. 